الذي هدانا للإسلام أكمله لنا وأتمه علينا ورضيه لنا دينا أحمده تعالى وأشكره وأستعينه وأستغفره وأثني عليه الخير كله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو الأول وعليه المعول وهو المرتجى ومنه المبتدى وإليه المنتهى وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبد الله ورسوله هادي البرية ومعلم البشرية ومجدد الحنيفية صلى الله عليه وعلى آل بيته الأطهار وصحابته الأبرار وتابعيه الأخيار صلوات تامات كاملات متعاقبات ما تعاقب الليل والنهار وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يُصلِح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear brothers and sisters Last week we spoke about some of the categories of people who are beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we mentioned that there are many descriptions of different characteristics that people have that earned them the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we want to go over another hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some more qualities of people who are beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-abd al-mu'min al-mufattan al-tawwab. Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his slave who is a believer and who may fall into fitna from time to time. He may be overpowered sometimes by his nafs or by the shaitan, and he may commit sins or acts of disobedience, but then after that, he is tawab. After he falls into sins, after he commits acts of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he regrets it, he feels sorry about it, and he begs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his forgiveness. He repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-abd al-mu'min al-mufattan al-tawwab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servant who is a believer, who may fall into trials, who may fall into fitna, but then after that, he turns back in sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us as human beings are sinless. None of us are perfect. We will all slip from time to time. 
We will all make mistakes from time to time. We will all be overpowered by our own desires or by the shaitan from time to time. But what differentiates a person of righteousness from a person of evil is that a person of evil will commit these acts of disobedience, will sin, will disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will cross the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set, and he will not feel guilty about it. He will not feel that he did anything wrong. He feels comfortable disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very dangerous state for someone's heart to reach, where they don't feel bothered by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. But as for a believer, a believer may commit mistakes, a believer may commit sins. And all of us as human beings, we will commit sins in our lives. And we have committed so many sins in our lives. But what keeps us under the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we repent to Him and we ask Him for His forgiveness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He describes the muttaqeen, the people of taqwa, the people of piety, one of the descriptions that He gives them in the Qur'an, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُوا الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أولئك جزاؤهم مغفرة من ربهم وجنات تجري من تحت الأنهار خالدين فيها. From the descriptions of the muttaqin of the righteous ones who are beloved by Allah subhanahu wa taala, Allah describes them as people who may disobey Allah subhanahu wa taala as human beings. They they're not perfect. They fall into sin. Those who if they commit an act of immorality or if they wrong themselves by disobeying Allah by committing sins after they do this they feel regret and they remember Allah and they ask Allah for forgiveness for their sins and who forgives sins other than Allah Allah is the one who accepts repentance so turn to him if you have made mistakes if you have committed sins and they do not continue upon that sin. They do not continue upon this disobedience of Allah. They repent and they, they're sincere in their repentance and they rectify themselves. These people, their reward will be forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the gardens of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all amongst the people who earn His forgiveness and who earn these gardens of paradise. So this is a category of people who are beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows that as human beings, we are not perfect. So He loves the, the believer who even when he falls into sins, turns to Him in repentance. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawwabin. Allah loves those who turn to Him in repentance. And He emphasizes the importance of turning to Him in repentance so many times in the Qur'an. He is the one who accepts the repentance of His servants. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And turn to Allah in repentance, all of you, O believers, so that you may be successful. Allah emphasizes this time and time again because He wants us to repent to Him. He loves our act of repenting to Him. And He wants to accept our repentance and forgive us. وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah wants to forgive you. He wants to accept your repentance. So repent to Him and He will accept your repentance. So this is a very important quality that we have to have. Be from the people who constantly turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance for your sins and you will earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The great Hanbali faqih, Imam Ibn Qudama rahimahullah, he wrote a book called Kitab al-Tawwabin. The book of those who have repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he mentions many beautiful stories of servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who may have been involved in great disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them and they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance and they rectified their lives. And, and these stories, they are examples for you and me because we all commit sins. And we all need to be encouraged from time to time to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be a part of our, of our regular routine 
to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we see the stories of people who have been involved in disobedience, who have been involved in sins, but then they got out of that and they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something that gives us hope as well. That if they were involved in such disobedience and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely changed their state and they became from those who were close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their repentance, then there is hope for you and me as well. Never feel so burdened by your sins that you lose hope in the mercy of Allah. That my sins are so great, no matter how much I repent, I will not be accepted. Never have that type of attitude, right? So one of the stories that Imam Ibn Qudama rahimahullah, a beautiful story that he mentions in this book, Kitab al-Tawwabin, he mentions the story of the great Tabi'i, Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah. So he was from the generation of the Tabi'in. That's the generation that came after the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. So he wasn't a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but he did meet some of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa during his lifetime. So Malik ibn Dinar, as a young man, he was someone who was not obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of his greatest weaknesses was that he was an alcoholic. He used to drink too much. He was a Muslim, but this was his fitna. This was his test that he used to drink, right? So eventually, he got married and he had a young daughter and he became very attached to this daughter right he loved his daughter very much but still he had this bad habit of drinking and sometimes you know he would drink so much and get drunk that he wouldn't pray his salah on time that he would miss his prayers right so this was this was his problem this was his disobedience so he was very attached to his daughter and one day when the daughter was about two or three years old she became sick and after a short illness, she died. He was so attached to this girl, it was his only child and she died. So this really, really broke his heart. He fell into great sadness and great depression and he started drinking even more to mask that pain. So one night he was drinking and he became drunk and he missed the Isha prayer and he went to sleep. While he was sleeping, he had a dream. He had a dream that it was Yawmul Qiyamah. And he was being chased by a very violent looking snake. The snake had its mouth open and was chasing after him and he's running away from the snake. He had this very vivid dream. He's being chased by the snake and as he's running away, he passes by an old man. And this old man is crying and he's very weak. And as he passes by the old man, he asks the old man for help. Can you help me? I'm being chased by the snake. Can you, can you save me? Can you do something for me? And the old man says, I want to help you. I wish I could help you, but I'm too weak for this. I cannot help you. So just keep running. Maybe you will be able to escape. So he keeps running with the snake right behind him. And he reaches a hill. He climbs the hill, but it's a dead end. It's a cliff. And he sees on the other side of that cliff is the fire. And then he hears a voice saying, Do not enter here. You are not from the people of the fire. You are not from the people of the fire, so go back. So he goes back. The snake is still on his tail. He's running away. The snake is getting closer and closer. And he passes by the old man again and he asks him again, can you please help me? And the old man says, I wish I could, but I can't. Go to such and such mountain because on such and such mountain, there are some trusts of the Muslims that are kept in that mountain. Some of the trusts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping for the Muslims are kept on that mountain. So he goes to that mountain, he sees this mountain with some beautiful caves carved into it that have beautiful shutters with all sorts of jewels and rubies. And when he reaches that mountain, these shutters open and many children come out. Many children come out. And these children, they are the children of the Muslims who passed away in their childhood. 
And the Prophet ﷺ actually said about the children of Muslims who die in their childhood. This is a very difficult pain for the parents, of course. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards the parents for their patience through that pain. The Prophet ﷺ said about parents who go through this. He said, Awladul Muslimin fi Jabalin fil Jannah Yakfuluhum Ibrahim Wasara alayhim as salam. That the children of the Muslims who died in their childhood, they are kept on a mountain in Jannah and they are under the supervision of Ibrahim and his wife Sarah. They're taking care of them. And on Yawm Al Qiyamah, they will be returned to their parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give these children permission to intercede on behalf of their parents. There's another narration where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that there will be children, the children of Muslims who died while they, were chi- while they were children, and they will be crying at the door of Jannah. And it will be asked to them, why are you crying? And the children will say, we don't want to enter without our parents. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them permission, to bring your parents with you in Jannah as well. This is the reward for a person who loses a child and is patient upon the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even even a woman who miscarries a child. The Prophet ﷺ said about this, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِنَّ السِّقْطَ لَيَجُرُّ أُمَّهُ بِسَرَرِهِ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ إِذَا احْتَسَبَتُهُ He swore by Allah, I swear by the one in whose hand my life is in, that the miscarried child will drag his mother into Jannah by the umbilical cord. He will drag his mother into Jannah by the umbilical cord if she was patient upon this great test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested her with. Subhanallah. So going back to the, to the story of Malik ibn Dinar, he goes to this mountain. The children come out and his daughter is there, his daughter who died. So she comes to save her father. She takes her father with one hand and she pushes the snake away with the other hand. And when the snake sees the girl's hand, the snake runs away. So now Alhamdulillah he is safe. Malik ibn Dinar is safe. And his daughter asks him a question. She says to her father, she quotes a verse of the Quran. Alam yahni lilladheena amanu an takhsha'a kulubuhum li dhikri allahi wa ma nazala min al-haq. Hasn't the time come for those who believe, for their hearts to be affected by the remembrance of Allah and what has come down of the truth. Isn't it time, O oh my father, that your heart should be affected by the remembrance of Allah and you should repent for your sins, you should leave your way of disobedience. Hasn't the time come for this? Alam yahni. Hasn't the time come? And then he wakes up from the dream and he answers the question after he wakes up. He says, Bala an. Yes, surely the time has come. Surely the time has come. And he takes all of the containers of alcohol that he has, he breaks them, he spills all of the wine, and he becomes a very pious, dedicated servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He repents with sincerity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him success after that. He became one of the students of one of the great scholars, Al Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah. And he became well known for his piety and his righteousness and for his. He's calling others to the path of righteousness as well. And he gave da'wah in other lands as well. The way that Islam entered India was through Malik ibn Dinar. Malik ibn Dinar, he went to India, he gave da'wah over there. And that is how Islam started and spread in India, alhamdulillah. He built a masjid in Kerala, which is still there today. Masjid Malik ibn Dina. Right? So Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought great good to the ummah through this man. Even though he started out as a mufattan, as a person who was put to trial, as a person who was involved in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he was tawwab, he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered his mercy upon him. So no matter how great your sins are, remember this hadith. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-abda al-mu'min al-mufattan at-tawwab. Allah, He loves His slave who is a believer, who may be put to trial, who may have some tests, who may fall into sins, but 
After that, he is tawwab. He repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah loves to accept people's repentance. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people who repent for our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people who recognize our own faults and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to purify us of our disobedience. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, all of the children of Adam, they commit sins. They make mistakes. All of us. But the best of those who sin, the best of those who make mistakes are At-Tawwabun. Those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from At-Tawwabin. May He make us from the people who constantly turn to Him in repentance. May He accept our repentance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower us with His love in this world and in the hereafter. Ameen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bi hadhi Sayyid al-Mursaleen. Aqoolu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Jaleel li wa lakum wa li jami' al-Muslimin min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-Ghafoor al-Rahim. الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters We should never allow the shaytan to deceive us into thinking that we are not in need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes a person, Allah may bless a person with obedience to him. A person prays five times a day. He does even optional acts of worship. He prays the hajjud. He fasts on Mondays and Thursdays. He gives sadaqah, right? So one of the tricks of the shaitan for people who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to put a, a sense of self-amazement in this person's heart. Like, look at me, mashallah. I do all of these things. I, I do so much better than so many other people. I'm an obedient servant of Allah. So this person may be deceived by the shaitan into thinking that he doesn't need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis. He may be deceived into thinking that repentance, that's for the bad people, for the people who don't pray, for the people who don't read Quran. Repentance is for them, but alhamdulillah, I'm doing everything. Why do I need to repent? This is a very dangerous trap of the shaitan that we should not fall into. Every one of us commits sins, whether we know it or not, whether we realize it or not, and every single one of us has to constantly turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَمَن لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Whoever does not make tawbah, whoever does not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these people, they are a zalimun. If you don't repent, you are from the zalimun. There are two categories of people and there's no third. Either you are from at-tawwabun, from the people who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you're not from them, you're automatically in the second category, you are from a zalimun, from the evildoers. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Right? So tawbah is, a, is an obligation upon every single one of us. So let us make it a habit that we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis, that we beg for His forgiveness for the sins that we commit knowingly and unknowingly. And by doing this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify us and He will bless us and He will shower His love upon us in this world and in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this to all of us. Ameen. هذا وصلوا وسلموا رحمكم الله على الرسول المجتبى والنبي المصطفى كما أمركم بذلك ربكم جل وعلا فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المكروبين واقض الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار 
عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون Oh